G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Well, look at Louie now. Yes, she's looking very pretty. There's been a lot of changes, a lot of things added, a lot of little touch-ups. And not only that, there are 18 cannons on trucks on the deck now. And that includes those horrible little ones at the back here on the quarter deck. And they were just blobs before. They were horrible little blobs. Well, not anymore. I spent a lot of time working on those and they have come up a treat. They're all nice and shiny now. And we've got guns here, cannons on trucks on the main deck, and here on the forecastle as well. That was a lot of work, especially to clean up those trucks. Those are actually the trucks that were originally there, all covered in glue. The barrels aren't. I had to source alternate barrels. But if you'd seen the previous videos, you knew what a mess things were. I spent a lot of time touching it all up. All right, well, would you like to see how I did all that? It was a lot of fun. Roll the music. <laughs> So after the last video I had a good look over the kit before doing any more painting and I realised there were flurs missing here at the front. All right, so there's one here at the back of this forecastle but there wasn't one here and it wasn't on the other side. I've just done that one on the other side over there. I've just done that one. So I cast those. Here's some photos. I cast those in um, using the blue stuff and then uh, filling them with milliput. So I made the moulds with the blue stuff Filled them with Milliput and then I made some more flurs. So what I did was I cast this one and this one, right? Because it's basically positioned correctly, but it'll be the opposite. So I used the one on that side, flipped around to go on this side, and I used this one here that I'd cast, fits on the other side. That way they're kind of angled just right. So this tiny little fella is going to go over here. Now I'd learnt from last time that just cutting them off flush, you can see there it's just a uh, it's a flush mount, that wasn't going to work. And I also found the CA glue wasn't really bonding very well to the um, milliput. It would stick to the plastic, sure, no worries, but it wasn't bonding the milliput. So in the end I gave up on using that and I used PVA white wood glue. Silly's Aquid here is uh, the one I have here. It's just a white wood glue. Polyvinyl acetate, I think it is. PVA, yep. And that holds beautifully. That really holds well. And the other trick that I'm going to use here is I'm not going to butt join it onto there. That's just too hard. What I have here is a triangle file. And it is just the right width. The width of this triangle file is the same width as the base there. So this fits perfectly. All I have to do then is to rest this file across the top and then file out a groove until the top of the file just is as level with the, um, the little post there. So I've got a perfect little equilateral V. And then I cut that out of my part two of them fit together, spot on. You can see that over here. That one actually sat in there. Gravity, no glue at all. Was very happy. So it was very easy then to put in the PVA glue. Problem solved. That's going to be a good strong fix. The PVA allows me to bump them. If I did that with the CA glue, she'd snap off like that. All right, I'm going to get on and file that out. I'll just slide my little deck piece out the way if I don't want to wreck that. And now, beauty of my little file, it actually got a bend on the end of it. I actually pushed it too hard once and it kind of, it's got a little curved end. But that's good because then I always know which of the three I'm using and be consistent. So I'll keep that pointed down. I want the midpoint there. Score, yep, that's the midpoint. And we'll just file that out. now is to cut the V here and it's an equilateral triangle so it's pretty easy to work out they're all the same angle and they're all the same length of sides right so it's 60 degrees so um, I've even got measurements on here but 
quite frankly. Um, that's 45, so that is 60. And I've just got to make an absolute replica of that reflected across this side. Done. Let's see if it fits. Moment of truth. Just like I bought one. Might add a little bit of filing, but actually I think it is fitting. It's just the, um, the gilding part here is quite fat. So I'll need to put a bit of putty in there. Some PVA white wood glue. That will help fill the hole. And I've already dry fit this. So I know it fits. Perfect. Absolutely spot on. So um, that's that job done. Let's get on with something else. So how do I turn one of these clued up, broken, absolutely mangled and horrible looking uh, guns? How do I get them to look like something like this? I know it's going to be very hard to see because they're so tiny. All right, that one's nice and clean. It's got decent sized wheels on it. Okay. The truck is open. All the stops are on it. And the barrel is at least reasonable and it fits in nicely so that one is not too bad that'll paint up really nicely well you could cheat and pinch something out another get this out of my Zvezda Archeron frigate kit and it's one two hundred and it should be like a probably an 18 or 24 pounder ends up being about the same size but the detail just isn't there it is so cheaply and poorly molded that to try and make that look half decent well for a start the barrel is molded in to the truck so you know you got a lot of work but I managed to find a way to turn this horrible lump of glued up gunk Right, where he's got his barrels is all skew and it's it's glued into the wrong spot and he's he's just um, I think it's flipped his barrels actually flipped on its side it's an absolute mess so I can convert that into something reasonable let me show you how first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut off the wheels they're all broken anyway on one side like not one of these these little carriages I pulled off were, were intact so we'll cut those off it seems drastic but actually what we're going to put on is going to look a lot better. So it's pretty easy to cut those off. Flush with the side of the truck. Okay, now they're off. We'll give those sides a bit of a sand. Try and get them flat as possible. Let's have a look. Just remove the glue, try not to remove too much of the plastic. Okay, yeah, we'll probably get away with that, that's fine. Now, we don't want to wreck this thing completely, and that's going to happen if we start savagely cutting in. So what I need, I need one of these. Now, this will hold in shape. I'm going to use this a lot through here, because is going to be very helpful. So using that I can now keep that thing from flipping away and I need to see if I can prise that cannon out. Some of them came out really easily, some of them were quite tricky. So the first thing I do is see if I can find those wall edges and just gently score down and we might be in luck here, I can hear some snapping. Because some of them all I did was this. Okay. It's actually gone in really deep. It's gone in well. So back to my back to my apparatus. Yep. It's actually going to be an easy one. So yeah, that's gone in really deep. That's fine. I've actually hit pay dirt there. With some of them, I scored and then nothing happened. That was the cannon was so severely glued in that. Um, <laughs> 
I needed to use a razor saw, but I won't here. I won't need to use a razor saw. Okay, so I managed to actually just get them out. I've been very lucky with this kit with a number of things I've been able to repair. So okay, now that's out. What I need to do is again protect this, and I'll use one of my diamond files. Got quite a selection of diamond files here. Now I have one that is a square. It's a square form shape. So that will go in holding this as I can. I can try and get in there, clean that out. And this one's actually not too bad. Some of them were really easy and I've lucked out the one I've chosen to do on camera is actually one of the easy ones. Some of them as I say I had to get the razor saw in and be really gentle. Okay, that's quite good. Now, you don't want to take out this little lump there. And then some of them, I started scraping all that out and cutting that out. Don't. That's a stop. That's so that the cannon doesn't completely tilt over and go skyward. So keep that. What you do want to do is find where the groove is. So it's your slot here. And that is for, on the edge of your cannons, you've got little, you've got little arms there, which it pivots on. Okay. I'll show you a nice clean one. Now this is the actual kit part. These are little eight pounders and they get used in the forecast as well so there were four of them left over but I will be using those in the forecast. I need them for there. So um, we will need more barrels and there's a couple of ways we could do that but I'll talk about that in a sec. But anyhow the barrels have those little Little lumps that stick out and these are actually correct to scale first I thought they look really big and fat you know they're not they actually are that thick if you have a look at some photos of um, cannons that they restored from this period they actually are that thick so that's quite a big groove that you're going to need in your truck and it simply isn't there you probably won't be able to see this there's this piss ant little groove that they put in there absolutely useless so what I found is you need a triangle file and being brave, find that spot. There it is. File down quite away. Maybe you can see now there is quite a groove there. Quite a groove. And it's uh, approximately a V shape. We'll need that circular. So now I'll go to my circle diamond file and I'll just smooth that out. And then when we put our barrel in, so can you see that groove is just right. You've got to actually dig down quite a bit, probably one and a half, nearly two millimeters into it. It seems like you're going quite a distance, but if you don't, the cannon's going to sit far too tall and then it won't actually poke through the holes in the railings where it's supposed to go. Because remember, I've kind of put a wooden deck on this. Even though that's a tiny amount, probably less than half a millimetre, these things all add up and we certainly don't want the cannons so that they have to actually point down to the water. That looks ridiculous. Which is the problem he was having actually. If he'd had a look and realised that these grooves weren't deep enough and dug them out, his cannons might have sat a lot better. But then again, he used so much glue that it was an absolute mess. Alright, so we have a truck and we have that. We just need to tidy it up a bit. Let's have a look. The bottom of it's looking a bit awful. So we'll just flatten that out a bit. Getting all the gunk off the bottom is also going to help this sit nicely. And is it level? No, it's a little bit wonky on that side. And this is important too. Get your bottom level. Yes, that's much better. So that's quite good. Continue to clean out any gunk in there. The barrel is going to hide most of this, but um, doing a good job now means you have less to worry about later. Now one of the biggest problems is with all the glue is you might have lost the little steps here. I don't know if you can see them. Those tiny little steps. You can usually see them on one side and then it's just a matter of Regrooving them. Uh, 
those ones weren't too bad. I'll um, do a better job off camera, but basically again, use the I can use my square file to mark those grooves as best I can with well, those steps. I basically step down. Once we've done that, our truck is ready for wheels. For those of you wondering, the uh, rod I'm using, oh, it's fluctuating, 1.4 millimeters. Okay, so nearly one and a half mil rod sort of thing. It was hard to know the exact size the wheels should be on these carriages. I tried to match the ones on the model and they ended up being oversized. So um, it took a while until I referenced some photos and I went, oh, they need to be a lot thinner. So for me on this model, there are only eight pounders and they're only on the quarter deck. So this will be fine, they will all match. They'll be fine. On the um, forecastle, the eight pounders there, they're all sitting just on fixed stands. So um, they are not, they're carronades, I suppose. They are not um, basically cannons on trucks. So as long as I'm consistent with one group and the wheels look about, you know, approximately to size, I'll get away with it. Okay, how do we get the wheels onto the cannon truck? I'll show you how. You may have noticed I've used these, um, these little forcepy type things. They're, um, they're tweezers that just hold shut, right? And I've got them in there into the cart for the cannon because they're a triangular shape. Well, they're tapered, right? And it happens to match the tape of my cart, which is really good. So now I can press down on the sides without worrying about destroying it. So I was able to get in there and sand and I didn't cave the sides in and wreck the whole thing. So they're kind of handy. They also work really nicely now for what I'm about to do. I need to get those little wheels on there. And I know those wheels aren't perfect, but it doesn't matter because we will sand them down later. So I've cut them a little thicker than I need. So using some Revel Contactor, which I prefer because it'll give me more slathering time, and my wax pencil, tap on one of these little guys and then I'll pop that into the position that I want. Close enough. Now these guys just sit just over the edge of the bottom of the cart and they sit, the front ones sit just proud. So that one's fine. That one's spot on. All right, we'll do the one at the back. Now the reason I use this Rebel Contactor is it gives me more time and it allows me a bit of fiddling room because I will need to slide these little guys around. This one sits at the back, but it's not right at the back, it's just underneath that last little piece. So it sits there. That's it. They look pretty good. Check, check down that way. Do they line up? Yes. They look nice and square. Yes, right. Moving on the other side. Not that hard at all. If you've got a wax pencil, you can do these sort of things. And we're supposed to be in lockdown today, but there has been a ton of cars. This is about my fifth take of doing this. A ton of cars. I don't know what these people are all driving around for. We're locked down, guys. Lockdown kind of means it's stay home. Okay, so I just eyeball this, see how they look. further back that way. And this is why I like the real contactor. I can slide this around. Tamiya Thin may dry a lot faster for me. Even though it's the middle of winter here, it's still quite warm because it's tropical Queensland. Wow, well, subtropics. Tropical enough. Tropical enough. I know they're too big and I know they're not perfectly edged correctly. But that won't matter because once that is dry, I'll just put this one aside, Here's one I made last night and it should have dried. So I just slide my little tweezery things all the way in to protect this so that I'm not going to be pushing against those walls without wrecking things. Now you can see how fat they are. So what I do is I'll bring in my sanding block very gently, but this is quite a, quite a good sanding block. Another reason that I've used the Rebel Contactor is it gives you a really good glowing. Like if you leave it to set, it um, 
it will seep in, it'll get everywhere. Where you go. So that's coming down already. So I've really got to be careful I don't go too far. Okay, now they're level and they're straight, that's fine. So there she is, looking less like a June buggy and more like the cart for a cannon. And you can fit all that to get them with you think. They are quite thick, the wheels on one of these little cannon trolleys, these little trucks. So, um, you know, they will end up being about just over a millimetre sort of wide. And about, I say, one and a half millimetres diameter. That is looking quite good. All we need is that barrel. Now, I had four of these barrels still in the kit, which we're using on the forecastle. So I thought, well, I can cast those, and yeah, I made myself some uh, some little blue stuff moulds here, and I stuffed all the moulds full of um, milliput like I've done before, and I cast some barrels, and you know, they're, they're, they're not bad. But, look, the milliput was fine for making a few ornamentations on the ship where I could really get in there and sand around them, but these barrels aren't perfectly round, they're a little bit wobbly, I could probably clean them up, but they probably take a day each to clean up, and I've got six of them to do. That's over a week's work just to clean up those barrels. I thought, oh, there's got to be a better way. And so I looked at the Zvezda kit, and um, could I just get away with whatever they had? Nope. Even though one 200 scale um, 16 pounders end up being the same, roughly the same size as one 144 scale 8 pounders. So, you know, you could if you weren't too worried. But I got into all this trouble with my trucks and they were looking quite good. It's a lot better than that Zvezda moulding. So what could I find that was this size? And luckily I remembered I had two wasser kits. I already had a red box wasser that I bought on sale. Got a really cheap price. And it's not too bad. It's not the best moulding. But I also have a wasser white box that Bernard found for me for $20. Two shekels. Found for me at a, uh, at a model show. So, those barrels, if you see the pig, they were just a little bit too long. But they had a couple of extra ridges on the, um, at the end there, the muzzle. And if you cut those two extra ridges off, they got so close. I don't know if I can show you these both together. But basically, they're so close. It's probably about a millimetre longer than it should be. But it will be fine in our little cart. So there she is. Alright, we've got to paint them up yet, but um, that is how you rescue a blobby one and turn it into one that um, will paint up and look almost as good as new. In fact, you won't be able to tell the difference. There we go. It's been a week of work, you wouldn't believe it. But for that, I have created 18 cannons in their trucks. And it was a lot of fiddling around to fix up those little ones, the eight pounders up here on the quarter deck. But the results, and you'll see some photos here all overlay, I think the results are worth it. They look so much better. The new barrels really help. And the brass colour, I mixed a bit of the, um, the brass I was using, which is actually, I used it on here because it's so golden. But I dulled it down with a bit of silver and then I brushed it literally dry brushed it on all those cannons so I didn't ruin any of the fine details and they have come up a treat. So there we go. Forecastle looking nicely armed. Main deck cannons are in. You're getting a feel for how it's going to be once I get all the cannons in all the way through here and also we're going to have the um, the gun port lids on. Then she's going to start looking good. But a lot of work has gone into Louis. There's a lot of little touch-ups I didn't even talk about. And there's a lot more to come because I have a solution for the problem with the flying bridge, it's called. The little um, cover here that I always said it was for uh, keeping the sailors, you know, out of the sun while they had their wine and cheese. Well, actually, it's called a flying bridge. And I've got a solution for how the ladders go down. And also what we need to do, we actually need to cut holes and things. So there's more scratch work, there's more changes, the more things I'm going to fiddle with. But I enjoy that and it's going to improve the model. And if only I ever know that it's been done, well, you'll know, you'll be watching videos. But what I mean is, I'm only doing it for me. I'm doing it because I want to improve the model and get it as close to what the ship might have been like. 
It's a bit hard because we don't really have any plans of this. We have plans of the Coriani, but we do not have any plans of the St. Louis. There was a model at some stage. There's been some drawings. That's it. A lot of it is conjecture. But she's typical for a French ship from the early 17th century. And I'm thoroughly enjoying this build. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. All we've done is cannons. But as you can see, there was a lot of work, a lot of fun. I mean, it took me hours to actually do all the brass. It took me about two to three hours just to paint and brass up those 18 barrels. Because they took two coats and there's two sides. So that's 144 passes. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of work, but I think it's worth it. Anyhow, that's where I'll leave you this time. Next time we'll be doing, as I say, some scratch work, some changes. We'll start getting this whole thing glued up, hopefully, and then we can move on with more deck fittings and start working up, maybe getting some masts and things on this. Oh, it's all happening. It's all happening. I hope you're enjoying this build of the Airfix St. Louis as much as I am. And look, if you enjoy these videos, then please like comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you know when my next video comes out. And if you really want to help me out, please go to my Patreon page. There's a link at the end of this video. It's also in the description. And from as little as a dollar a month, that will help me produce videos. You know, yeah, if I can get thousands of people all giving me a dollar a month, look, I can retire. <laughs> Not that I'll ever retire. I'll be building ships in my retirement. But you know what I mean. A little bit would help me out. And you get to see the videos early and advert free. All right. Well, I'll stop waffling on. I um, need to go and make dinner and feed the cat. Yeah, exciting life it is. Okay, goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Houdini.